Greeno, and welcome along to Season 2, Episode 4 of Better Than Eddie. So we're starting here on the club vision screen today. As you can see, uh, the board are very disappointed with my leadership of the team. Now I think they're being a little bit harsh. Uh, we'll see why in the schedule screen in a little while. But I got hauled in for a board meeting and I've been told that I've got five games to kind of turn things around. Otherwise I'm out the door. Uh, initially they asked me to get eight points from the next five games. I managed to talk them down to only six points, which I think it should be achievable, but you never know the way form has been this year. But yeah, let's go and have a little look at what's been going on. As you can see, we're currently sitting in 16th place in the table, which is, is in fairness some way off the, the top half finish that the board were expecting at the beginning of the season. But if you look at the amount of points on the board, we have 20 points and Southampton were sitting in 8th, they're only on 25. So one good run of form, I think, could really turn things around for us. We're all familiar with that full-time team talk, which talks about a, a real Jekyll and Hyde performance. And that's pretty much how I would sum up the last 10 or 12 games that we've played. After the uh, Marseille game, we had a league game away to Brentford, where we went down early, but I tinkered around with the formation in the middle of the game Callum Wilson came up with a couple of goals and we pinched a 2-1 win. After that we took on Arsenal at home. A game, you know, with our <laughs> season going the way it is, we weren't really expecting to win, but we came out of that with a 1-0 win. Uh, a rotated side went up to Rosenborg and got another win in the Europa League. And then we beat Aston Villa 2-0 away with a very quick fire brace from Gabriel Barbosa. We lost away at Palace. Um, you know, you can't expect to win every game. <laughs> Certainly not the way things have been. But then we took on Forest, and we really, really played them off the park. I mean, we should have won by more than three, to be honest, in that game. So, you know, I thought we turned a corner. However, <laughs> um, again, we rotated a bit for this uh, CSKA game. We'd already qualified from the group, so that was fine. Then, we lost to Southampton 1-0 which, you know, never goes down particularly well. Liverpool, who were top of the table, came to town and beat us 1-0. And at that point, the board hauled me in to tell me how disappointed they were with our performance in that game. I mean, we, we only lost 1-0, so I don't know what that was about. Uh, we went to Everton then. Um, yeah, went 2-0 up in the game really early, but just couldn't hold on, unfortunately. So they came back and pinched a 2-2 draw. Then this is the game that the board got really narky about. Um, we lost 2-1 to Leicester. We went a goal down, then Eric Dyer got sent off for a second yellow card. We managed to pull one back from Callum Wilson, but right deep into injury time, Leicester pinched a winner. And yeah, so we got beat 2-1 in that game. That was the second time I got hauled in front of the board. So uh, that's where the, uh, the ultimatum really came in. But today we're up against QPR in the FA Cup. QPR are a League One side at the moment, but they're doing pretty well in the league. Their form is good, so I guess their morale will be high. So we're going to put out the strongest possible team I've got available and hopefully uh, yeah, boost our own morale a little bit with a good, strong win. You can see that we're setting up with our more attacking formation, the 4-1-2-3 formation, and pretty much the strongest starting lineup that's available to me. If you take a look down at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see there's a few injuries in the squad at the moment. Unfortunately, our first choice right back, Zayfuik, is out for about three months. Uh, Linetti, who's been a very good rotation option in midfield, started quite a lot of games, but he's out for six weeks. Dan Juma, who is pretty much a backup option, I would say, but has done well when he's come into the side. He's out for a couple of weeks. And of course, Eric Dyer is banned today because of that sending off he got in the last game. But going into the actual side, you can see here, we've gone with all the big guns today, so... Uh, Let's get into the game and hopefully they will bring us the result we're looking for. So we've asked the boys to ignore what the media have been saying about them recently and get out there and show them what they're capable of. Hopefully they will do that. Um, the media just before the game actually were speculating that a, a poor result in this game could result in me losing my job, which is a little bit harsh seeing as I'd already sorted out with the board <laughs> that I've got another five games to go. And there we are, Ryan Fraser has scored fairly early in the game and hopefully that's going to ease the pressure. I'm sure the uh, the fans will be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief at that. They'll be coming into the stadium today with a little bit of trepidation, I suppose, given uh, the recent form and the fact that QPR 
would be seen as a you know as, as a banana skin of sorts. So yeah, I'm happy to go one up this early in the game. We've got another chance here, Paredes. Oh, nodded just over, unfortunately. We're having the better of the game, although possession, QPR are dominating, which is odd, and they've scored. Oh my goodness. The fans will not be happy with that. And that's a fairly poor goal to concede by the looks of it. A straight ball. And don't know what Mepham was doing there with his marking, but... Yeah, that's unfortunate. So we've got it all to do again. We're going to demand more because, you know, QBR are only a League One side. We really ought to be tucking them away fairly comfortably. What happened there? I thought that was going in. It looked like our own man from an offside position headed it off the line for them. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> so we're going to have to get into the boys a little bit at half time, I think. Gonna fairly aggressively tell them I'm not happy with the performance and get them out with a fleeing area for the second half. Tell them to get creative right from the start. So, a throw in here, Stacy takes. Lewis Cook picks up the ball. Cross in from Stacy, but half cleared by QPR. Luke Shaw's picked up the ball. Lerma and Paredes passing it between themselves in midfield. We're keeping the ball, but we seem to be going backwards. We're looking for a killer pass. There it is, Barbosa. Oh, he clips the outside of the post and it goes wide. A good spell of possession, but unfortunately the finish at the end of it not quite up to scratch. Another highlight here starts with a throw from Stacy. Beats his man. Is he going to get to the byline and cross it in? No, he's going to shoot into the side netting. Goodness me, there were better options there for sure. QPR have picked up the ball here. Hopefully we can get a foot in. We can. Stacy wins the ball. Knocks it back to Mepham. Stacy again. Is he going to look down the line? No. Mepham back into the middle of a park. Back to the keeper. And we start rebuilding again. Knocking it around in a little triangle. Paredes now. A bit of magic from him would be good today. Barbosa looks like he might have the beating of his man there. Gets a ball in. And what a header that is from Callum Wilson. A great cross from Barbosa to pick him out. And Wilson just glances it home into the bottom corner. Barbosa did really well here. I thought he was going to try and get to the byline. But he spotted Wilson in a crowd of QPR players. And did really well to pick him out there. Excellent. So I think we're going to make a change or two just to freshen things up. Barbosa's looking a little bit tired and not having the greatest of games. So maybe we'll look at bringing Jordan and Ivan for a little while. Put him into a more traditional winger role. And who else can come off? Lewis Cook is not having the best game. So if we take him off and bring Gutierrez on, we'll swap him and Paredes around. 20 minutes to go. Paredes here with a set piece. Nodded over by Araujo. That's a shame. Highlight here starts with QPR. Hopefully we're not going to concede our lead for the second time in the game. No, Stacey wins the ball with a fair, strong tackle. Gets past his man. Cuts it back in to Jordan Ibe. The loose ball falls to Paredes, whose shot is blocked. Stacey back to Paredes. They're knocking it about. Paredes has an effort. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. With the outside of the right foot. Curls it into the top corner. And surely that's got to be enough for us now. This is typical Bournemouth play. Just knocking the ball around on the edge of the box. No one really wanting to have a shot. But when the opportunity finally presented itself to Paredes. That's a great finish. Oh, I can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief now because uh, those press reports about me losing my job given a bad result today had me a little bit worried we might be coming to the end of the road. Luke Shaw picks up a loose ball here. He charges down the left. He's going on a strong run here but cuts back inside to Gutierrez. Finds Shaw again. Looking for a cross here, surely. Ryan Fraser. No, he's tackled. 
Araujo, the centre half, comes forward with the ball though. Into Gutierrez, his Mexican buddy. Oh, that's a huge error from the QPR defender. And Callum Wilson was on hand just to tuck it home. The simplest of chances. It was a good ball from Gutierrez. Jordan, I nodded it down. And that's very poor defending. And Wilson, whilst he's not been in the greatest of form all season, he will mop up chances like that all day long. So let's just use up another substitution here. Who can we bring on for a little bit? I reckon let's take Stacy off because he's not been very fit recently. And just bring Steve Cook on for a few minutes at right back. We're into injury time now. Is this going to be one more chance here? Paredes on the ball. A good ball out to Fraser on the left. Crosses it in. Oh, that snuck in Jordan Ibe. And that's his first of the season. He's not really had that much football, to be honest. But, um, yeah, he'll be pleased to get off the mark for the season, even though it's taken him January to do it. It was a good ball in from Fraser and... Uh, yeah, a nice finish, although the keeper will think he could have done better, I am sure. So there we are, 5-1. And it looks like the idea of putting the big guns in has paid off. Well, the good news after that result is the board have upgraded me from a D to a C-. minus. So, uh, yeah, that's something positive. <laughs> we'll cling on to anything we can at the moment. In terms of when uh, I bring you back next we got two choices really so if things aren't going so well and I'm struggling to meet that board ultimatum of the, the six points in five games then I guess we'll come back for the last of those five games which is Norwich hopefully things will have gone better and we'll have got past that little uh, bump in the road and if so then I'd like to bring you back for the second leg of the Club Bruges game which is our Europa League knockout so you'll have to wait and see for the next episode to see how uh, how we've got on. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. Uh, it was good to get a nice strong win, albeit against League One opposition, but right now beggars can't be choosers, can they? If you have enjoyed it, please consider dropping a like on the video and help me get seen by more people. Any comments you've got, hints or tips how I'm still going to get out of this sticky situation, I'd love to see them too. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. Uh, there's a lot of good content earlier in this series and, uh, and with my Indian national team save on the channel too. Finally, I'd just like to say thanks for watching the video. Uh, your support is appreciated as always. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again next time for either Norwich or Club Bruges. Bye for now.